got the Unabomber look now. You don't know no, I don't because I cut the I cut the my beard. It's not all you know, ragged and stuff. But um, no, I I gotta make this video because um, I I. Uh, Apparently, I'm being wildly misunderstood, um, uh, and I don't, I don't know how, um, but I am being, and this is from three people, so it, um, I'll clear it up. Uh, it, it, from my perspective, it's like saying, I don't believe Muhammad was a prophet, and then getting people responding back. How dare you say there is no God? They don't exactly equate, but... I don't know, I would... But, let me explain. There's no reason to go into... I don't, you know, the, that first part was kind of irrelevant, but it just, it just stuns me. Um, documentary hypothesis is not... Um, It's not patristic. I don't know if I, I think I keep saying that that it's not. It's not from ancient times. It was it was Wellhausen, um, and I believe I mentioned that. Um, let me see if I can go to these comments and, and answer some people on here. Um, I actually didn't read a comment um, because it started off as, I don't think you're giving the patristic opinion of the Old Testament right. And then I stopped, but I'll, I'll I actually honestly did not, did not even go in and read this because that's, there's no need to go further. I, I just said, stop. I, I don't need to read any further than the first line because you are right. When did I ever claim, you know, because it, this just seems strange to me. When, uh, when you read the church fathers, they unanimously refer to the Old Testament as being valid and extremely important as the, for the foreshadowing of Christ. As, of course, you know, perhaps it is an error of diction on your point because I believe you don't care about the Old Testament. No. Again, I'm not calling anybody stupid. This I'm not when I say this, I'm not calling anybody stupid. My my channel is not made for stupid people. You should know I immensely care about the Old Testament. I'm making a series on the documentary hypothesis. If you see the other video, um, which I think it was up before any of these videos or any of these comments were up, um, I clearly talk about uh it's kind of, I, I got done making that video and I made another video in the, and I'm saying I happily like this is awesome it's a better view um, documentary hypothesis doesn't say that these are mythical people um, I think it's more valid and I think it's greatly more uh, you can see much more in depth of it uh do I think there was a historical Abraham? Yes. Um, Moses and the ten plagues and all that? Yes. Adam and Eve? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I at that point, I mean, myth, if I say myths, I mean myths. I, I um, Probably in the old, not in the modern usage of like the fable or, well, even fable, if you go back to, it's weird. Um, legends. Uh, the legend, I, I guess legend would be a better word. Legends aren't lies or things like that, but it's a legend, but it's, it's, it's a allegorical. It has a point. Um. You know, we're not told what, you know, what Abraham's favorite color tunic to wear was. It's not, um, somebody said, I am 
and orthodox, sir, but I disagree with you a lot. Okay. Hopefully not on anything orthodox. <laughs> um, uh, but people say, well, how can these just be myths, and they're just myths, and... Um, It, it it shocks me because I make so many videos saying you know we we should we can see that you know that I mentioned the Moabite stone, the archaeology coming out of Jerusalem, uh, the fact that the Protestant uh, tomb of Jesus, I believe it's the the Protestant tomb of Jesus is actually shown to be. Um, one of Pharaoh's wives, because it was the exact dimensions of a, of a queen's like burial place at that time or whatever. Um, it, it was, uh, it was the, the geometry was Egyptian or something like that. It was very weird. Might not be the prostitute. It might be something. No, but there, I mean, there's just, I mean, we find the arrowheads of the invasion of Nebuchadnezzar and then the burnt layer. And the, I mean, they, they find all of this stuff. I mean, I constantly talk about, you know, the atheists for a long time were saying the Hittites, the Hittites didn't exist. The Hittites, I, this proves the Bible is fake because, look, there's no such people as the Hittites. We don't have a scrap of evidence of them. This was their big point. They're very bombastic about this. And then um, we dig up their capital. <laughs> um, when I say I don't care about the Old Testament... Um, I only view the Old Testament through the incarnation of Christ. Um, J, P, E, and D with redactor. Um, they were writing what they saw through their eyes and what the history was. Now, it's, I believe each of them was using propaganda. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, that's their, their view. You know, you're going to add your view. That's why a gospel according to, according to, according to. Is this the gospel? Well, yes, but in other sense, no, because the gospel is the message. It was never a book. I think this was the main understanding of the, um, the Muslims. I think they comp constantly heard the Christians talking about the gospel. And then, lo and behold, in their codices, they would have in between four and six, usually before between four and six sometimes. Um, or they'd have, there'd be one that's kind of interwoven. <laughs> there'd be Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all woven into one, you know, um, type of thing. <laughs> um, so, the Torah, I don't think is any... I don't know of any of the, 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 it was always debated, there was no, never, oh, this was the writer of the Torah, and I, I once was talking to a, um, a Protestant kid, uh, a Calvinist, Jack, tanning out Jack Chick tracks, I think that's Calvinism, right, or if some, if it's not Calvinism, it's something worse than Calvinism, um, and he's, I said, he said, well, Moses wrote the Torah, and I said, what? I said, how do you know that? So it says it in the Bible. So it says, where does it say it in the Bible? And he said, he quoted, and he said, and Jesus, he says, he's reading it, Jesus said, and Jesus says, and Moses said, such and such and such and such. It says in, you know, well, he said that. It didn't, I mean, and then they, I think he said, uh, well, Moses wrote the Ten Commandments. He rewrote the Ten Commandments. Or he rewrote the law or the commandments or something. So that means Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. It's like, what? I think I mixed up Leviticus and Numbers in there. Um, but um, no, I believe each of them offer a piece of information. I think it was given to, um, there's debates between whether it was Jeremiah or Ezra, and I think it was, uh, I still think, uh, what's his name, Richard Elliott Friedman supports the idea that it's, um, that it is, uh, 
that it, he changed his view and says it's Jeremiah that, that wove them all together. And um, I, I still think it's, it's Ezra um, that, that wove them all together. Because now you're not getting one person's point. I mean, these people were, were writing this, kind of like Paul. I don't think Paul thought his letters were going to be continued on for 2,000 years. Um, some of the encyclicals, like the, what we call the Catholic epistles, uh, the writers, I mean, First John, was so beautifully written that, yeah, I think that that was meant to last, and it was meant to be actually a meditation. It was very cyclical. Um, you could, the one thing I say about is John and Slaughterhouse Five have the same, have the same type of thing. You can, it's, they're the only two pieces of writing I know, the only two books I know, where you can start at any point, and as long as you come around full circle, uh, the book will mean the exact same thing. There's no, you won't get, there's no out of order. It's, uh, it's very cool. Um, so, uh, these writers, yeah, they, you know, they, they were actually working in competition with one another. You know, the, one writes something, the other's like, oh, well, we need our, our story heard. But say, and pre, the, the other guy's like, oh, what? The, they're telling it all wrong, and then tells his version of it. And the other, the next guy goes, wait a minute. It, those guys were right, and this guy tried to screw it around. I'm going to write all this, and then I'm going to record the, you know, go in depth of it, you know? So, um... It's uh, it's cool like that, and then the redactor, whoever he may have been, wove it all together. Um, through the, I mean, he had to have authority to do that. I mean, people would have known of these writings. He had to have authority to do this. I think you can see God's hand in it. Uh, I view it as kind of like an archaeological discovery, something that's just jumps, you know, oh, that's what it is. Um, <laughs> that it was. Um, You know, it's, if we dig up, if we dig up something, you know, an archaeological site, and people, oh, that's counter to orthodoxy. That's not possible. <laughs> or, or a scientific, just that, it's like, that's not, if we find out who wrote it, or not even the who's, but the order, or the fact that it, it was multiple sources, I, I'm not saying any of these are pagan sources, or that they bar, in fact, I think, People talk about all these names of these different gods, and I'll have a few, El Elan, El Olam, El Shaddai, Elohim, El, um, Yahweh, and the, well, yeah, the archaeologists find all these different names, and they're meaning God, um, and I think they all knew who they were talking, I don't think these were separate gods' names that they all pulled together, I think it's like when we talk about, you know, Christ, when we call them, uh, the son of righteousness, this S U N of righteousness, um, the, the son of God, the son of man. Well, archaeologists would dig that up and say, "Oh, look at these different gods. You know, they're kind of similar and they overlap, kind of like the pagans do." So this might, no, I, I don't take. I think the Old Testament is older than all the other stories, even the stuff in Babylon. I think it's older. Now it didn't get written down until around. Uh, just after David and Solomon. It didn't get written down in the forms that we have it now, or at least in the forms that existed after, um, or I mean before, uh, the redactor put them all together. Uh, now, people like King David absolutely existed, and Solomon, and I think both of them were evil, wicked men. When you When you look at it, but if you if you're not view if you're not trying to dig in and, and, and uncover the like what's the what's the history what's the actual concreteness of it which I'm not afraid to do um, if you look at it as a story you can learn a lot from the story of David um, of of his interact of how he interacted with God um, and how he could be a prefiguring of Christ Jonah. Um, there might have been somebody as arrogant as Jonah, but the story of Jonah, he doesn't come across as a good guy. He's, God yells at him at the end, like, you cared more about that plant than you did these other people. I think that's a perfect example of how the, 
especially southern the southern Jews treated uh, a lot of the prophets. They they always wanted to build their altars. They always wanted to mix with the pagans. Um, so not the Old Testament's not useless and it's not fables and fairy tales. It's but it's not the New Testament. I mean Ignatius of Ignatius of Antioch I think is a pretty heavy source, uh, and I quote him uh, in talking about this. Do people disagree with him? Peace to you. May God save Serbia. I've run out of time.